While it's expected that President Obama will make good on his campaign promise to close the U.S. military prison at Guantanamo Bay, it appears his administration will continue the controversial rendition program practiced under the Bush administration. To help us navigate these murky legal waters is Gabor Rona, the International Legal Director of Human Rights First. And Gabor, welcome back to the program. Thank you so much. So what does the Obama administration believe is an appropriate use of rendition? Um, that answer has not yet been given by the task force that um, President Obama uh, created on his first full day in office uh, to revisit the questions of the Bush administration's detention regimes. However, what already seems to be uh, clear is that the practice of what was called extraordinary rendition, in other words, sending individuals uh, to other countries without the benefit of any judicial process um, and to countries where they stand risk of torture uh, is something that uh, CIA Director Panetta has said will no longer happen. But he's also said that uh, he would try to seek powers from the president which would allow the CIA to conduct more um, harsher interrogations if it were warranted. C can you shed some light on that for us? Um, that's right. In, sp in spite of the fact that um, the, again, one of the executive orders that President Obama signed uh, shortly after taking office says that uh, interrogation techniques will be restricted to those contained in the Army Field Manual, um, there is still uh, some unfortunate daylight left uh, in the wording of that order to allow for the kinds of interrogation techniques that uh, were practiced under the Bush administration and that amount to violations of either uh, the Torture Convention or the Geneva Conventions. So in your view, this document is not a humane and uh, legal model for military and CIA interrogations as it currently stands? Well, a couple of things need to, uh, to be settled. One is that um, the administration under no circumstances will countenance treatment of detainees that violates our obligations under the Torture Convention or the Geneva Conventions. And that means neither torture nor cruel, inhuman, and degrading treatment. Second of all, the Army Field Manual, um, which has been uh, essentially thrown up as a model uh, for the Obama administration, still has some flaws in it. For example, um, there, it does permit um, isolation, it permits sleep deprivation under some circumstances. Um, while these may not be universally understood to be elements of torture, they certainly are still violations of the Geneva Convention's prohibitions against cruel and human and degrading treatment. So the, one of the things that Di CIA Director Leon Panetta would be looking for would be, would it be an addition to what's already uh, in the Army Manual or would, there, would it be something else, and something entirely different? Um, the possibility that concerns us and that we think the administration should not be considering is that uh, there may be interrogation techniques permitted for individuals that um, might be held uh, either in the custody of the uniform services, in which case there would have to be amendments made to the Army Field Manual to allow such interrogation techniques, or um, another possibility is that there would be a separate set of uh, interrogation permissions given to uh, agencies other than those in the, in the military. And what concerns us about that is the potential of reviving uh, CIA detention. Should the U.S. be even rendering suspects to foreign justice? Um, well, there's a problem with the word rendition. Uh, there are renditions and renditions and renditions. Uh, rendition to justice uh, simply means that a person is um, taken to a judicial proceeding. There's nothing wrong with that under international law um, as long as uh, the person has an opportunity to contest their being taken to uh, a judicial proceeding in another country and, of course, has the opportunity to uh, contest the judicial proceeding that they're sent to. But the Bush administration practiced something quite different than that. The Bush administration practiced what we call extraordinary rendition, which involved no judicial proceedings. 
and under the laws of, um, of countries uh, as we know them, this was nothing more or different than the crime of kidnapping. Um, we hope and trust that the Obama administration has forsworn, um, has made it clear that it will not simply grab people off the street in violation of local criminal laws uh, and send them without any judicial process to other countries, in particular to countries where they may be at risk of being tortured. So it will be uh, within the due process norms secured by international and domestic law? President Obama has said that he fully intends for all of our counterterrorism operations to comport with our international legal obligations. Um, if he is true to his word, and I certainly hope and expect that, that he will be, then it means that any individual that the United States wants to detain will have to be detained according to some legal process, whether it's under criminal law or under the laws of war or some other domestic legal process. What legal safeguards should the administration be thinking about when it figures out what this rendition program, what it's exactly going to be, to, to guard against uh, botched um, uh, mistaken identities or, or, or botched captures? I think there are three things. One is that the capture has to be pursuant to a legal process. The individual uh, that is being targeted has to be given, given the opportunity to contest um, their detention in some kind of legal proceeding. Two, at the destination, the individual has to be brought before a legal proceeding to contest their continued detention. Um, and three, whether or not there are such legal proceedings involved, the United States, in order to be true to its obligations uh, under international law, has to blanketly refuse to send people to countries where there is a risk of abuse or torture. Um, the, uh, the obligation of all countries is to refrain from what is called refoulement in international law, and that is sending people to countries where there is a risk that they may be abused or tortured. The detainees which have been released or will be released from Guant Guantanamo Bay once it's closed, will they, where will they go and who's going to question them? How are they going to get their day in court? Well, it's already quite clear that some of those detainees will be transferred uh, to U.S. soil for continued legal proceedings, criminal process. Um, we are telling the administration that the best way of uh, holding those criminally responsible who have committed crimes, for example, those that are alleged to have participated in the 9-11 in the plot, would be through the normal channels of the federal criminal courts. Uh, there are proposals also being made to establish national security courts and detention without trial. And these are singularly bad ideas which would just be uh, taking Guantanamo and Guantanamo-style justice and transporting it to the United States. That has already failed. But there are other detainees um, who will no doubt be released. Um, many of the, the detainees in Guantanamo now are Yemeni, and chances are they will be returned to Yemen. And there are also detainees uh, that the United States could and should uh, take into the U.S. because they cannot be returned to their countries of origin for fear of facing torture and abuse. Talk a little bit about how the United States uh, might want to respond to some of the civil suits which have been brought by former detainees held at Guantanamo Bay. Well, um, the United States is in one sense uh, in the vanguard of international law. Um, by providing aliens with legal opportunities to file claims in U.S. courts uh, for violations of, of international law that they have suffered. Um, but one of the problems is that uh, in the Bush administration and now even in the Obama administration, the government has taken the position that such suits cannot go forward if to do so creates a risk of disclosing what are called state secrets. And the problem with this position um, is not that state secrets shouldn't be protected. It's that the government's mere say-so that state secrets are involved should not be accepted by courts flat out. Rather, the right way to protect state, state secrets is for courts on a case-by-case -case basis to determine whether or not the government has a legitimate claim 
um, of state secrets in a particular case. And if the government does, then the court um, has an additional obligation to try to fashion whatever protective measures it can fashion in order to protect the government's uh, national security information and at the same time allow the case to go forward. And courts are very accustomed to doing that. Gabor Rona, thank you very much for joining us. Good to see you again. My pleasure.